So here we go. This is a biggie. This is, well, this is the one that pushes me, pushes my limits, pushes me beyond my comfort zone to review a product like the Mola Mola Kula Integrated Amplifier. And I say that, well, for a number of reasons, and I'm going <laughs> to tell you all about it as we go on. But I will start with, first, it's an integrated amp, and it has a, a Class D power section in it with HyPEX modules designed by the legendary Bruno Puzzi. My hat's off. If I was wearing a hat, I would take it off right now and say, Bruno, you are the man. But I've heard other amplifiers with HyPEX uh, modules that didn't have quite the effect on me that this one does, that the Kugla does. So actually, when I got this piece into review, I wasn't actually sure that I was going to go ahead and do the review because I just said, I'm not a class D guy. I don't know that this is the right kind of product for me to do it in, a, in a fair way. But I hooked it up, started listening, and I was, I was taken aback by what I heard. But part of the reason it's, it blew me away the way it did is because the, the DAC section, which is based on the Mola Mola Tembaki DAC, is that I can tell you right up front is, I think it is the best sounding DAC I've ever heard in my life. Not ever a lot. Or certainly heard in this room. So we were off to a, to a, a great start. I was said, oh yeah, I definitely want to review this piece. And by the way, it's incredibly beautiful. Pictures do not do it justice. That curved top, oh, it's so it's beautiful. It's like a sine wave. It's a stunning piece of work. Uh, the concave front, the little tiny selector buttons, every little detail of it. It's like a jewel. Just beautiful. And by the way, it is handcrafted in the Netherlands. So, yeah, I was in. I was in. <laughs> I said, I'm, I'm a happy guy. I get to do this for a living and play with expensive toys like this. And it is expensive. Uh, the price, the base price, without the DAC and phono preamp of the Kula is $13,800. You add in the DAC, and that brings it up to $22,000. And then with the phono preamp, it is $25,000. A lot of money. Absolutely a lot of money. But you know, in the high-end universe, there are far, far, far more expensive pieces than this. It's just pushing it for me as a reviewer to review something that's $25,000. But, the, but the, the Tembaki itself, to put it in some sort of context, the Tembaki DAC, you can buy it as a standalone piece, and that is $13,400. This is a DAC, and then you'd have to use it with another amplifier. So in that sense, the Kula is something of uh, a bargain? No, that's not the right word. Uh, it kind of makes sense for it to be the, the price that it is. Let's put it that way. So the volume control uh, is really interesting. First of all, uh, it feels great, and I am into knob feel. But as you turn it by hand or with the remote, uh, you hear clicking sounds as it's clicking relays to make the volume go up and down. It's kind of a, I, I like the sound of it actually. It's not annoying, but it's, it's, it was unexpected, put it that way. Now, I mostly used the app, and the app is, is very uh, understated, I would say. It doesn't give you a, a billion different options. It sort of gives you just enough information to do what you need to do. So there's a total of six inputs uh, on the back panel. Three of them are RCA stereo, and three of them are XLR. And then there's a whole section for the DAC, if you order the DAC, with the usual suspects like uh, um, AES-EBU, optical, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I'll show you pictures of the back panel, much better than my descriptions. And uh, all is well. But I like the app because the app is so flexible when you when you have the optional phono preamp it lets you adjust uh, impedance on the fly and capacitance uh, lots of options there 
uh, at, at your fingertips on your, from your phone. And it works very, very well. The power output is 100 watts per channel for 8 ohm speakers and 200 watts per channel for 4 ohm speakers. The DAC is, does high res up to 384 32 bit PCM, 4 times DSD. Now, this isn't the sort of DAC that screams at you uh, uber resolution clarity details, look at me kind of thing. No, it's, it's, well, it's very high resolution, extremely high resolution, but it's balanced by extremely high musicality. And what, what is musicality? What is that word? If you've never heard that before in the context of an audio review. It means that instruments sound tonally like themselves, that the piano sounds like a piano and a clarinet sounds like a clarinet. The re, you, just, you just hear the, the, the true sounds of instruments. And a lot of DACs, really, really good ones, they forfeit some of that musicality to give you more resolution. Now I will of course link to the Mola Mola website for more detailed information about the specs and numbers and all that stuff. But oh, I, I forgot to mention that it does run warm to the touch. Not hot, but definitely warm. And it is rune ready if you're a rune person. Oh, and it doesn't have MQA if you're an MQA person. Uh, sorry, it didn't make the grade <laughs> with uh, Bruno. Anyway, I'm just joking. I don't know why it doesn't have MQA, but it doesn't. And ask me if I care. N no, I don't care. <laughs> I really don't care. Now, the very first uh, speaker that I hooked up was the Graham Chartwell LS6. I reviewed it a few months ago. I will link to it right, right there. The review, but it's a very buttoned-down British sounding speaker. Beautiful, but kind of polite, laid back, but luscious sounding. So the very first recording I played was this one, Ola Tunji's Drums of Passion. This was recorded, I, I should have looked, I think in 1959 or 1960. It was actually a radio hit. It's world music before that term was invented. It's truly world music. It's African music, drums, percussion, it's a big sound, chanting. Great, great recording. I loved it then, actually. It was, it was a radio hit. Anyway, I'm playing it over the LS6s, and I was shocked by the, by the dynamic range of these speakers. And it was one of those, yeah, I had to play it louder. I had to play it louder. And the ferocity, <laughs> ferocity of the, uh, the drums, I, I wasn't expecting that. And the the control over the woofer was extraordinary. Um, and just the, the depth, everything about the recording that I played forever was, yeah, I thought I knew this recording, but not like this. I didn't know, I had the LP a hundred years ago, but uh, I didn't know that that music sounded like that until I heard it in this combination of the Kula with the LS6. So then I tried the Audiophysic Tempo 35, which I've recently reviewed, and I will link to that review right there. Uh, German speaker, very precise sounding speaker. And I, I love that speaker. But again, it was so much bigger sounding. It's not very big. It's, it's kind of a skinny, small floor standing speaker. But its intensity of what it could put out with the Ola Tunji record, but also with this one, with this Thelonious Monk record. This was recorded in 1957s with John Coltrane. It's amazing, it's stereo, and it's so good. You wonder, what have they forgotten over these uh, 60 plus years? Hearing Monk's timing, his dynamics, his piano touch over the tempo 35s, the, that shading is, what makes it, if not real, the sense that you're hearing what Monk was putting into his music, into that piano that he was playing. So the degree of uh, finesse and detail of that sort, musical detail, not just resolution for resolution's sake, but resolution in terms of hearing the music itself had me on the edge of my seat. 
Then this recording, I'm not sure exactly how to classify this. I guess it's like neo uh, bluegrass, classically influenced bluegrass. Um, and that thing of hearing the players listening to each other of purely acoustic music like this. The string tone was beautiful. Yeah, and this was still over the tempos. Now, at this point, I switch from the tempos to the uh, Klipsch Cornwall 4s. And to be honest, that seemed like a misstep at first. At first, it did. Because it seemed that the sound on the Cornwall was just too lean. Cornwall is a big, you know, big speaker, broad-shouldered sound. And it seemed kind of lean. It played loud, it was dynamic, but tonally something wasn't quite right and I don't know what it is. And, and that was eventually rectified, but my first blush with it was, no, I, I don't know if this is a good match. I had certain expectations of what the Cornwalls sound like based on listening with many other amplifiers and, and DAX. And what the cooler was doing with the Cornwalls was kind of not where I thought it was going. I was confused. That's what it was. So I, I took a break. I, I was working on other reviews because I'm usually doing two or three reviews at the same time. So I put the cool aside, did some other work, and when I came back, I played this recording, this Yo-Yo Ma Bach Trios recording. Really, really nice. I love this recording. But and I played it on many systems, but when I played it on the Kula and the Cornwalls together, I was aware that while it sounded really good, I heard this artificial reverb that was part of the mix of this recording. And I thought, well, that's kind of weird. But actually, the, the Kula was just telling me more of what was in the recording. I may not have jived with my expectations, but it's yeah, okay, but the air around the instruments was was beautiful, and it was so expansive and just lovely sounding, just like being in the room. To use that cliche of one one more one more time, I was I was in awe of what I heard with the Kula and the Cornwall. So then I decided to take a left turn and compare the Cornwall with the L kit. Uh, 300B amplifier. And wow. Now the L kit sounded great, totally really nice. Uh, I couldn't hear the reverb anymore. I wasn't aware that it was there. But the bottom end of the bass, of Edgar Meyer's bass, was, was missing in action. Uh, I had to really listen for it. Yeah, I guess it's there kind of thing. But on the Kula, it was there. The whole instrument was there. The complete <laughs> wood bass instrument, stand the bass instrument, was completely there. And it was kind of missing in action a bit with the 300B amplifier. Now, I wasn't playing it loud. This had nothing to do with the 300B amp being 9 watts a channel and the cooler being 100 watts a channel. That wasn't what was going on. I wasn't anywhere near the 9 watts. Because remember, the Cornwalls are very efficient speakers. And I wasn't playing it all that loud. So yeah. The Kula was just being a more faithful mess messenger, and the Elkit 300B was, was beautiful and wonderful and enjoyable to listen to, but it wasn't telling me the whole story. Continuing with the Eclipse Cornwall 4s, I decided to compare the Kula, Kula's DAC to my reference DAC, the Denifreps Terminator. And I did that, it was pretty straightforward how to do that. I just took the output of my Jay's Audio CD transport, went into the Denifreps, and then ran that through the line input on the Kula. Yeah, the, the, the Denifreps Terminator is, is wonderful. It's, it's fun to listen to, great timing, great rhythm and pace. Uh, all around, terrific. But by comparison to the Mola Mola DAC, Hmm, I don't know. I'm not so sure. <laughs> the Mola Mola is just more musical. It's got more body, more space. The imaging is better. The depth is better. It's just, and it's relaxed sounding. And when I go back to the Terminator, the Terminator seems kind of uptight by comparison. 
And remember, these are comparisons. If you're just listening to one or the other, you're not going through this whole checklist of things. But when you do the comparisons, it becomes very black and white, right? So I can go on living with the Terminator, no problem. I'm just saying, but I have heard. <laughs> the, I've, had, I've heard something that outshines the Terminator in surprising ways. I'm very impressed. To finish up, I started to play vinyl. Now I have a, an SME 15 turntable with an SME 5 arm and an Ortofon Cadenza Blue a moving coil cartridge. And I hooked it up to the Coolos Phono input and it's so easy on the app to dial in impedance. You can do these changes on the fly, impedance, capacitance, uh, gain. It's super easy to do and it's a super quiet preamp. No noise whatsoever. Dead quiet. Um, it sounded, and it sounded clean, it sounded precise, but this time, no. I would say my two reference phono preamps, the Vandenhall Grail and the Parasound JC3 Plus, they just had more vinyl sound. What I like about playing records, it just had more life to it. It had more both of those had more get up and go than what I was getting from the coolest phono preamp. I liked what it did, I admired what it did, but I missed the, the, the part of playing records, the sound of vinyl. It's, I felt that something was missing from the coolest phono input. Anyway, but the overall sound of the Kula. Oh, oh, a very important detail that I, oh, I almost left out is when I'm playing the Kula over the Cornwalls, the horn quality of the Cornwalls was so much less so. Now they're not particularly, they don't, their horn colorations are pretty minimal anyway, but the Kula just opened up the sound more. They, they disappeared more and they're big wide speakers and to have something that sizable disappear is a pretty cool magic trick. So yeah, the, the Kula could do that. And that spatial aspect of it, the way it delineated soundstage depth and space and focus was really, really well. Just without even trying, that's what makes it so special. It just is, it's just there. So yeah, this is a turning point for me. The Mola Mola Kula integrated amplifier is very expensive, but it's very, very good. And if you're uh, lucky enough to be able to afford something like this, I strongly urge, even if you've been on the fence with Class D, I, this is the one to check out. This is the one. I am, I am now rethinking my whole, my feelings about what Class D is capable of. It's, yes, I'm, I'm in. So I think we've done it. My name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. And if you like what I do here, if you've liked this review, there's more. Uh, I would urge you to consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. To do that super easy. Hit that button right down there. When you do, hit the notification bell. And, uh, and you'll be in. You'll be a part of the surge, the surge to 200,000. If you have already subscribed, thank you so much for doing that. Um, but you could also check out my Patreon at p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash audiophiliac. But wait, there's more. Uh, there's more reviews uh, and then interviews, all kinds of amazingly interesting pieces for you to see. There's over 1,100 videos on this channel. They're not all as good as this. I should tell you right up front. Anyway, I'm just kidding. Uh, so thank you again for watching, and I really, really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.